Welcome to News 6. Today's News 6 is being presented by the 6th graders from Jackson Liberty Elementary School in Amston, Ohio. Our teachers are Mrs. Duffield and Mr. Reimers. Most post offices are just post offices, but the Amston Post Office is more. Yvonne Nye has a look at that story. Thanks, Gina. The Amsden Post Office is also a general store that is more than 100 years old. The shelves are, of the store are stocked with a variety of foods and snacks. The shelves also hold many different antiques collected by the owner, Mrs. Ruth Sayre. Mrs. Sayre, Mrs. Sayre has owned and run the store and the post office for the past 35 years. She enjoys visiting with the people of Amsden when they come in to pick up their mail. But Mrs. Sayre explained to New Six reporter Teresa Baker that the store and the people aren't like the old, t old days. Mrs. Sayre, can you tell us about the Amston store and post office? Now, the store itself had some good years, but right now it's getting to be almost a thing of the past because little country stores like this, people don't uh, patronize like they used to. They've got too many large supermarkets and they like variety, and, and I really I can't blame them. And uh, you couldn't keep up with them in a little place like this. We've let uh, the place go down, except for the post office, but I enjoy it so because uh, being in a little town like this, everybody knows one another, and it's just like one big happy family. And you have a lot of antiques in the store. How long have you been collecting them? Well, all our life we've been collecting them. Uh, so many of them was just handed down. We didn't really realize they were antiques until the last, well, I mean, these years when people really go for antiques. I mean, a lot of times we thought we were just collecting junk, but it was fun for us because each piece was, had some sentimental value. We collected it here or there, and, and we really, it meant more to us than to anyone else. Like the old clock on the wall up there, it's... Um, an old clock that came from Germany. And then, of course, we got the old pot-bellied stove. Do the people in Amston have to come to the post office to pick up their mail? Yes, everyone comes after their mail, and that's the highlight of the day. Now, years ago, if you'd have came in here, night we had mail night and morning. Thank you, Mrs. Hare. This is Teresa Baker reporting for News 6. Many people in our country are trying to conserve energy. One family in the Amston area is doing just that. Here with the story is Teresa Baker. Thank you, Gina. Solar homes are rare in the Amston area, but two years ago, the Tommy J. Kaiser family decided to build a new home, a solar home. A solar heated home is one that is heated mainly by natural heat from the sun. There are 16 collectors on the roof of the house with seven and a half tons of rock in a storage bin in the basement. Hot air is collected from the sun and pulled down into the rock bin. The rocks remain warm from the, collect from, from the collected heat and will continue to store that heat for a couple of days. The fan pumps the warm air back into the house. These things make this an active solar home. This is a different, there is a difference between active and passive solar heat. Active solar heat involves some mechanical devices such as fans, blowers, and collectors. Passive solar heating uses no mechanical devices. Instead, it relies on the design of the house. For instance, most of the windows are on the south side of the house to pick up the sun's heat in the winter. Fewer windows on the north side cuts down on drafts from the cold north winter winds. The garage is located on the west end of the house to act as a natural wind break. Also, the house is heavily insulated, especially the doors and entrances. In fact, the house has an unheated airlock entry cut down on heat loss coming out of the house. Thanks, Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser, for letting us tour your home. Thanks, Teresa. Our building and antiques give us an idea of what it is like to live many years ago. Our new six crew walked into a past as Norman Elkert reports. Thanks, Gina. It was like walking into the television program Little House on the Prairie when we entered the log cabin belonging to Rick Pfeiffer. The cabin is near Amsden and it stands 
as it must have been about 150 years ago. The only difference is that the cabin is not in the original spot. Rick spotted the cabin in Oak Harbor, Ohio. He numbered each board and brought it to his home. There he spent a year rebuilding it. He has furnished the cabin with an antique rope bed with a straw tick. There is a wood burning stove. Almost all of the furnishings are antiques. Upstairs in the loft there is an antique child's bed, shoes, toys, and clothing. You almost expect to see Carrie Ingalls sleeping there. Pfeiffer's Pond and Cabin enjoy it, but don't destroy it, says Sign at Ricks. He built the cabin and provided local kids with a place to change their bathing suits and skates when they come to use his pond. We think that it is great that Rick allows the kids and local Boy Scout troops to use the cabin that he had built. Thanks, Norm. There are many forms of art and craft that have been carried over from days gone by. Robin Malone has a story about a woman in Amston that has started one of these antique crafts as a hobby. Robin? Thanks, Gina. Making quilts and designs is an ancient art. Most people th think that the quilt started in colonial America. In fact, the ancient Egyptians made quilts out of fabrics and yarns that they dye with the plant dye. Quilting in America came to acceptance in the 1800s and probably was at its highest point in the 1850s. During the pioneer days, quilting bees were a wonderful way for the pioneers to gather and exchange the latest news. In our community, Mrs. Lois Hoover makes quilts as a hobby. She has 25 grandchildren and is trying to make them all quilts. One of her grandchildren is in our class, Tracy Hoover. She interviewed her grandmother about her quilting hobby. When did you start your quilting? About three years ago, a friend of mine gave me a pattern of this particular quilt. And after I did that, I just kept on making some other ones. What other types of things do you make besides quilts? Now I make um, baby quilts, and mostly those are done on sewing machine. And I have some stuffed toys that I make for grandkids and oh, a few Christmas things. I've given most of them to the grandkids for Christmas. And potholders, pillows. That's about it. What kind of quilts do you make? Um, this is Ohio Star pattern. This is only a top. And I don't have it finished into a quilt yet. It has to have a back and things put on it. And this is just um, blocks, just no, no special name, just an old-fashioned block quilt. Could you demonstrate how you make the quilt? It's just an octagon-shaped pattern, and you lay it on double-folded material and cut your pattern. And when you have all the outside sewn, then you do a quilting rose. Follow the shape of your pattern one row and then you come inside and do another row and when it's finished it's like this. Thanks Mrs. Hoover. This is Tracy Hoover reporting for News 6. That's all for News 6 today. Next week News 6 will be presented by the sixth graders from Hicksville's Elementary School in Hicksville, Ohio. Have a good week and thanks for watching.